I'm going to call a meeting to order. Um, we have the select board here. We have Dorinda, the treasurer. We have Sarah, the town clerk. We have Randy Drury. We have Mike Cruel. Welcome. And uh, Victor, did I say your name? I'm not sure I didn't, I miss you maybe. Victor, our road commissioner. Um, so the first part of our meeting tonight is going to be our uh, organizational meeting, and then we will go into our regular uh, regular monthly meeting. Are there any, uh, we've got quite an ambitious agenda here. Are there any amendments to the agenda, Sarah? Uh, only adding the uh, John Udis and Della McDonough's uh, requests regarding uh, Green Up Day under correspondence. Okay, perfect. Okay. I have a question. Yes, Mary. Why, why are we appointing the chair and vice chair instead of electing them? We are electing them. What well, says appointment? Well, no, but we're electing them. Don't worry. I just was wondering don't when believe, I get. Don't believe everything you read, Mary. <laughs> I think Sarah's always on top of everything. And I said, oh my God, she must have discovered a statute that we haven't been following. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. So I have called the meeting to order. We are now in our organizational meeting. And the first item on the agenda is the appointment of the select board chair. And I move up. I, I move voting. Peter Hood. Go ahead. I move Peter Hood and I move that nominations be closed. I'll is second there, that. Is there a second? I did. Okay. All in favor of Peter Hood, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all very much. I appreciate your uh, support. I like Blizz's little speech last night. I was going to write it down, but I didn't write it down. So that's, <laughs> that's my version of Blizz's little speech. I really do. I really do appreciate your, uh, your support, one and all. Thank you. Um, so the next is, oh, the chair's voting status. Is there a motion? I move that Peter be allowed to vote on second. all issues. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? No. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Okay. Peter's going to be voting. Thank you. Um, adopting of Robert's rules of order. I've always been a little suspicious of this one, to tell you the truth, because there are all kinds of versions of Robert's rules of order that I've seen in red, but the fact of the matter is we do try and follow them. So we've always done this. I don't really know why. But anyway, is someone willing to make that motion? So move. Thank you, Phil. Second? Second. Thank you, Steve. Uh, all in favor of adopting Robert's Rules of Order as our procedure for select board meetings, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've done that. Appointment of select board vice chair, nominations. Nominate Mary Skinner. I'll second that. Okay, and uh, are there any other nominations? Okay, all those in favor of Mary Skinner to be select board vice chair, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. I'll do my best. Mary. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. I'll do my best to run the meetings when the few occasions when Peter's not there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, time and place, time and place for select board meetings. This is an interesting one. So I'm going to suggest that the motion should be, if possible, in person at the town hall and possibly with Zoom at the same time, if not possible, exclusively Zoom or words to that effect, because that's our practice. And I think five o'clock on the first and third Tuesdays is fine, unless anybody would like to consider changing that. Phil, does that still work for you? That still works for me, yeah. Perfect. So I'll make that make motion. That convoluted motion. I'll make that motion, Peter. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of 
designating or saying that our meetings will be on the first and third Tuesday of the month at five o'clock and that they will be uh, in person and hybrid if possible and if not uh, and if not remote and by hybrid I mean potentially offer a zoom option for our in person meetings if we can. Um, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. The motion's adopted. Designation of newspaper of record. I nominate the Times Argus. For a second, Mary. Yep. Okay. Second, Mary. <clears throat> all in favor of the Times Argus being designated as our newspaper of record, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, the motion is adopted. Appointment of road commissioner. Motion, please. I'll make a motion that we have Vic Dwyer as our road commissioner. And a second. Second. Sorry, who seconded? Liz? Liz. Okay, thank you. Um, all those in favor of appointing Vic Dwyer to be our road commissioner, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, Vic. The mantle, I hope the mantle doesn't fall heavy on your head. As I said. It may be dark, Vic, but you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> you want a speech, Vic. Yeah. Yeah, right. Nope. Okay, so here we here we go with our uh, with our laundry list. Reappointment of the following town positions. So I guess we need to do these one at a time because they're different people for each one. <laughs> so, uh, Sarah, are you going to deal with this? Give us the names. Uh, um, let's see. The uh, first of all, I asked the anybody on the ZBA if they were interested in stepping off. Um, I only got one confirmation that you want to stay on that was Jess, so I'm going to take their nose uh, or their silence as confirmation that they would like to stay on the ZBA. That leaves you with one vacancy on the ZBA, and we have two people who have written an interest to uh, interest in the position. One is Peter Raymond. I sent you his letter today, and Randy yep. Drury. Agreed. Anybody have a chance to read those letters, I hope? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Somebody ready to make a motion? Um, yeah, I wanted to, to follow up a little bit. Um, uh, Sarah, okay. maybe I would comment. Um, uh, and again, nothing, nothing against you, Randy, but uh, Peter Raymond being an attorney is really, really important for that, for that board. Um, we have in the past had attorneys and although they're not serving as legal counsel because they know the law and especially, and I think Peter is uh, an environmental attorney as was Dan Crisp. Um, that was incredibly helpful when we have um, an especially complex, I say we, but I'm not, not on anymore, but uh, when there's a complex hearing uh, to deal with. Um, so I'm, I'm going to throw that out there as a suggestion that, uh, Peter Raymond be appointed, um, to the empty ZBA position. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor of Peter Raymond to be appointed to the zoning board of adjustment, please say aye. 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 Uh, and any opposed? Okay, Peter has has it. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you, Randy, for your for your interest. We appreciate it. Um, budget committee cons considering candidates to fill three vacancies until March two thousand twenty two town meeting. Uh, do you want and me to talk? Because this is because nobody ran. So now we're appointing, correct? And the existing members resigned? Uh, there were no, no one, um, 
I mean, Bill McManus ran for reappointment uh, for for election to the Budget Committee, having been appointed last year. So he oh, okay. uh, he's on there. Elias is still on the Budget Committee, but George Longenecker did not run again, and uh, Bill Dorgan didn't run again. And we had another. We had a vac We had an existing vacancy. So whoever gets appointed uh, by the board tonight will will serve for one year and then they might have to, if they choose to run, they can run in 2022. But we have three openings and statutorily we're supposed to have five filled seats. The good news is that we have, people, Randy is interested in it and in, in uh, the budget committee, he's up, thrown in his name. Uh, so has uh, Mark Harris, who is, I think I sent you his letter as well. And Theo Kennedy said he was also interested in the budget committee. I asked him to send a letter to the board, but he had so far he has not sent that letter. So I'll let you guys deal with it as you want. You certainly know Theo from from interactions with the planning commission, and also he's a JP. Yep. So I know Mark Harris from Romney. Um, I think he's a fine fellow, and I know Randy, and I would be supportive of both of those folks um, on the budget committee. Um, and, you know, if Theo has the time for it, he is, he has been involved in the, um, he hasn't shown an interest in the capital planning um, process. So, you know, I'm supportive of that as well. That would fill all three slots, right? Yeah. Well, perfect. That would be I'll great. Second. So that, that is a motion I take it, Liz? Uh, sure, I'll move that we appoint Mark Harris, Randy Drury, and Theo Kennedy to the Budget Committee. Okay, and you'll second that, Mary? Yes. Thank and you. And well, I, can I just clarify, all three of them will have to run again in a year? Yes, because we can only appoint them for a year. Okay. So we'll have to figure out how we stagger the terms. I guess what we have okay. to do is, isn't it correct, Sarah, that we assign them slots? So... No, no. It's what just happened all over again? No, every all the the budget committee serving are they're staggered already. So when when they decide to run, um, each candidate will decide if he wants to run for one year, three year, two year, whatever is left on that term that they've been appointed. So right now everybody is just appointed for one year, but when they run in March for the March 20, 2022, they can say, well. I guess there's one term that's, you know, three years, I'll run for that, or the two, three that are three years, there are two that are two years, one that's one year, that type of thing. So they can well, they say, to, they, they, feel basically, like, they basically parse it out among themselves when the time comes. If they or choose. Forbid, two of them could run for one seat and we could end up with a vacancy again. Well, usually people are pretty smart about it. I get it. I get it. Okay. <laughs> so. We're appointing them to town meeting 2022. Correct. The motion has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Who seconded that motion? I'm sorry. Who I seconded Liz. it? Liz. Liz made it and Mary seconded it. Okay, that's what I want. Any opposed? Welcome, Randy. <laughs> Excuse me? I said, welcome, Randy. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Now you can come to any meeting you want. Ha ha, you already have been coming to every meeting. <laughs> Anyone can come to any meeting they want. I know. I'm just joking. We're, we're friendly. I have a new chair for the um, capital planning um, committee, too. <laughs> Randy. <laughs> See how it okay. goes. <laughs> you haven't set a meeting up for that, Liz, have you? A date? What? No, we don't need, well, there, she's coming on April 6th on our select board agenda. Um, and then after that, we're, we're going to plan another meeting. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Next on the firing line is emergency management coordinator. Ugh. Is there an interest? There is not. And that's, that's a really, that's a tough one for us because we need to get that uh, emergency management plan updated and you need some training. Peter's done some training, but Paul Attenti had all the training. So he was great, but he, um, and he had the certification, which I guess is now an online class you've got to take. That's painful. Um, and we do, so Paul doesn't want to serve again. So we're kind of, we're kind of out in the cold. Yeah. Um, so what? What do you really have to do? What's the minimum? 
Well, as Peter knows, you have to take that. I forget exactly. You have to take an online FEMA course to get certification to like 051 or 052 so you have the qualifications to uh, validate or fill out the emergency management plan. And we need that uh, updated every year to improve our rating with the state when it comes to, if, you know, hazard mitigation grants if there is some, if something happens here. The real, the real issue is, I mean, does that take a little bit of time? Yes, it does. But, but other than that, you sit around and wait for the phone to ring. But if heaven forbid we have a flood or an ice storm, or whatever else happens, whoever is in this position is going to be the thick of it because everybody is going to be reaching out to them. So it is not, it is not a nothing position at all. Um, I wonder. I wonder about Eric. If we wanted to approach him, um, if, you know, he's on the fire department. Eric, Eric Metivier, whatever his Eric last name is. Yeah. Um, I mean, he might be, I don't know what his schedule is like or what interest he has in that, but. Well, he's going to be a candidate as well. What was that, Randy? Sorry. I was just saying, I know that Sven Scribner uh, is on the emergency management team for the state, and oh. he may be somebody that. Um, has has experience with this, and uh, I do question uh, his capacity uh, to and ambition to to fill that slot. But I can at least have a conversation with him and mention that it's open, or or one of you can reach out and call. Well, I, would, I would suggest that we that we pass over this for tonight and see if we can find. I mean. We need somebody who's sincerely interested. I just don't want to appoint some random person, mm. whatever they are. The one thing, the one thing I would be willing to do is I took that online course, which wasn't that bad, but I think it was like four hours and it wasn't very exciting. I can tell you that. Um, so I am certified to fill out and sign that emergency management plan. And I, I don't mind doing that. It's just updating and making sure we've got the names in the right right in the right slots but i need somebody who's ready to ready to jump and run if there really is an emergency because that can't be me anybody wants ben's number to call him just don't give it out online while we're doing the meetings bill i mean uh, vic no get a hold of me i'll give it to you Thanks. yeah i'm shooting him a text messages uh text message right now as well that would maybe he's that'd be great <clears throat> Okay, so we will uh, we will hopefully consider that at our next uh, at our next meeting. Fire warden Zara. Uh, I mean, you know, Jason's just always done it, so just let's put him down again. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't reach out to him. Is this just congratulations? Oh, I reached out to Jason. Do people just don't reach back to me? Yeah. <laughs> well, my, my experience. My experience when I call Jason is he's the per perfect person because I say, Jason, I'm going to light off my bonfire on Tuesday. If you have a problem, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to presume you gave me a permit. He never gets back to me, so I light off my bonfire. Yeah, well, I mean, there aren't that many people that are not, well, I mean, maybe we're just lucky that don't start a fire on a day if you shouldn't have a fire. I'll move that we nominate Jason Merrill. I'll second it. For fire warden. So, I think Sarah, he, he kind of likes it to tell you the truth, but. I think that let the, let the word go forth that if you don't get back to Sarah, you're going to have to serve another year. <laughs> well, whatever. So it's been moved and seconded for Jason Merrill to be our fire warden for another year. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Were those all eyes? I don't think I heard enough eyes. Did somebody? Okay. All right. Okay. So, so Jason is in. And here is a new one. I feel the same way about this as I do about the special articles, but oh well. What, what choice do we have? So Sarah informs me that we are legally required by statute to have a tree warden. And, the duties, and the duties, as I understand, yes, Sarah. 
yeah, uh, not only are you legally required, but even more so with the ash borgs uh, problem uh, arising in towns, it's a huge deal. So it should be someone who has a little bit of a conservation interest, who understands trees. Yeah. Agreed, 100%. And then, uh, pertains to shade trees in the town's right of way. Victor, hold on one second. Go ahead. Are you talking to me? Go ahead. Yeah, it just, it pertains to shade trees in the town's right of way. So that is what the statute concentrates on. So if the town, uh, Victor or the road crew wants to take down a tree in the town's right of way, you have to call in the tree warden who will know all about the statutes regarding trees coming down and why they can and cannot down and how they are, should be selected. Victor. Yeah. Saying say I can be both? No, that would not be a good idea. Yeah. You don't think so? Well, because it, she just said the statute says that the, the town has to check with the tree warden before they can take down a tree. Well, Vic can move from one side of his desk to the other and give himself permission. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, all, 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 all I'm saying is, A, He's already involved with a road crew, which is perfect. And B, he has a lot of knowledge about trees and cutting down trees and removing trees and well, that's the issues and all the stuff that a tree warden needs to have. So it doesn't come up very often. It's come up two or three times over the years that I remember in the old days. And it was usually a town resident who didn't want us to cut a tree in the town right away, which was on their land. But other than that, I, I don't know what's going to come up about the Emerald Ash Borer, but... Can I say something? Yeah. Yes. According to the state statute, the tree warden does not have to be a resident of the municipality. How about checking with the Conservation Commission, you know, asking Lee Rossberg and the, and the other people for a recommendation? Yes, that's a, that's a good idea because as soon as you appoint a tree warden, the select board has to certify the co the appointment to the commissioner of forest parks and recreation. So that's kind of the the angle there you're looking for. Do you want to pass over it until the next meeting? Well, I just I just want to I just want to think about this again for a minute. Am I not correct that in the old days, and I'm looking to you, Mary uh, Mary Skinner, and Dorinda is nodding her head, yes, that Gary Lamel was the tree warden and road foreman and road commissioner, all three. I believe we just took turns rotating fence viewer, weigher of coal, and tree warden. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it was that also. Well, we it, all... it was true at one time. I think Gary was at least two of those, if not three. Right. Gary, Gary's here, you can ask him. Gary's on this phone call. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Gary, can you unmute yourself? There he is. There he is. So, Gary, enlighten us about this tree warden business. Oh, he's muted again. Wait, just unmute yourself, Gary, uh, up, up at the top. There's a, yep, that's it. You're on now. Right. There you uh, are. Doesn't come up too much uh, in the past. Uh, but if you need somebody, I'll do it. Okay. So, yes, Sarah. Thank you, Gary. The, the, uh, the tree warden should be able to determine whether or not the, the trees have are, are infested with this ash borer. And if the landowner has successfully uh, mitigated the infestation, the tree does not have to be taken down. I mean, a lot of this has to do with this ash borer stuff we're going to be dealing with. I'm just letting you know. So, you know, if you want to point Gary, that's great. But, you know, this probably might be a little bit of education on ash borer stuff. Not a problem. Peter, what's your pleasure? What's your pleasure, select board? Peter. Yes. Um, Dan uh, Danielle Fisco of the uh, of the uh, Forest Parks and Recreation tree person that 
she will be more than willing to educate anybody that wants to uh, ask her uh, on the uh, Emerald Ash Board. That's right. Yeah. My my understand. I spent I spent a fair amount of time talking to people and reading stuff when this whole Emerald Ash Board thing came up, and I gather. It is not particularly, I mean, you have to know what to look for, but it's not particularly challenging. It's pretty obvious. Especially no, it isn't. Once the trees start to, once the trees start to die. But right. anyway, I don't doubt that, I gather you can, you can peel back the bark and see the little tracks underneath the bark, et cetera, et cetera. Right. When those woodpeckers there, put that big, like big basketball. hole in them. When those woodpeckers put the big hole in them for, for pecking the ash, emerald ash borer out, that's uh a good indication that that tree is dead and gone. Yeah. 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 I'm just offering that to Gary and the select board that they can use her for a resource. She's very good. Well, that's great. That is great. Yeah. So, do we want to think about this? Do we want to nominate someone? What's our pleasure? Everybody speak at once. Bill? Um, I'll nominate uh, Gary. He volunteered to do it. He's done it before, and uh, why not? Okay. Sure, I'll second that. Okay. Any other, uh, any other nominations? So all those in favor of Gary to be appointed tree, what's the right word, tree warden? Warden. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, Gary, and thank you very much. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came, Gary? <laughs> he doesn't look like it's going to stress him out too much. <laughs> Wrightsville, I hope not. Wrightsville Beach Management Representative. Isn't that Jane Dudley? It is. She I did not contact her. I moved Jane Dudley. <laughs> Second. Okay. That was Phil? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All those in favor of Jane Dudley to be Wrightsville Beach Management Representative, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Jane is in. Recre Recreation Director. Does Mitch still want to do it? Uh, I did not hear from Mitch. Did you ask him? And he didn't respond? Uh, I did not ask him recently, so that's in all fairness. I was still, I, I got thrown on uh, some other stuff. Like, you can pass over it or whatever. Why don't, we, why don't we pass over it and just ask him? I mean, there there's something where, you know, as far as I know, he wants to do it, but I haven't talked to him recently either. Good idea. Okay, so we're going to pass over recreation director. Appointing a lister to fill a three-year vacancy until the March 2022 town meeting. I move David Smith. Second. Any other uh, candidates? Okay. All those in favor of David Smith to fill the vacant uh, Lister three year term. So what happens, Sarah, is he is appointed for a year and then he runs for the three year seat, or is it? He runs for the the two years remaining in the three year seat if Got he's it. still interested. Got it. I think it's okay. really nice that he stepped up because this is really going to really give him a lot of exposure to the town residents and stuff. So, Sarah, I agree with your your recommendation. Okay. Yeah, great idea. I do. I do too. I do too. Um, so I'm losing. I'm losing my mind here. We all up, those in favor of David Smith. <laughs> yeah, all in favor of David Smith. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? David is appointed. Thank you, David. Reappointing Phil as Middlesex representative to the Central Vermont internet board and Lowry Scharf as alternate. Is there a motion? I'm, I'm going to step away from that board. Um, 
I think I've done what I can do. And at this point, they need some people with much deeper technical background than I have. Um, and Lally's not going to be the alternate, but we are thinking of some people. He doesn't want to do it. Okay. Laurie doesn't want to do any position. He doesn't want to move up. No, I know he didn't want to move up. No. No. <laughs> but you're saying he doesn't want to be the alternate either? Uh, he doesn't. Well, maybe he'd be the alternate, but like he's, he doesn't, um, you know, he's, He's chairing the energy committee, right? And, and that's where his energies are. And plus, he found it really hard to jump in as an alternate yes. to understand what's happening. Um, right. There is that fellow that we thought we might try to reach out to, who's um, a technical guy who works from home. He gets up at town meeting sometimes. Right. He talks. To, what is his name? Do you know, Phil? No. I do. Um, Lawrence. David Lawrence. Yeah, I think it is David Lawrence. And he, I mean, he may be way too busy. Um, but he would be somebody who would be a great person for that, I think. So we should, who should reach out to him? Just put something out on Front Porch Forum, Sarah. Yep. People like to be asked, though, too. I mean, then it's yeah. harder for them to say no. <laughs> I can contact him directly. Okay. And if anyone else has other questions. would be glad to talk with him if he wanted to hear what it was all about, I presume. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you say, so we also need an alternate then because Larry doesn't right. want him. Okay. So we need both. Well, Liz is nodding her head from side to side. I think he might still be the alternate. Let's. Yeah. He'll be the alternate, but let's pass over it until yes. we know who the person is going to be. Yep. Good yep. idea. Okay. And Anita Krauth is resigning from the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District, and we need to appoint a replacement. Well, first of all, we should send a thank you letter to her. She served for a long time. I mean, I would Basically say forever, I think, right? I mean, yeah, right. At least 10 years. I mean, she's 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 been and so we should really write her a letter and thank her for her service. I agree, Mary, and she's attended. God, I, I shudder to think how many meetings she's attended on our behalf. So, and that's her. Oh, shit. Jody and Matt, you need to mute. Do we need to? Um, do we need to have a motion to accept it, or just acknowledge we're accepting it? I think we just acknowledge we're accepting it, Mary. Um, but we need to if find, there was anyone interested, need to find somebody to fill that position. A young person who's interested in the environment. Yeah. Well, let's let's ask the Conservation Commission for recommendations too, and, and post it on Front Porch Farm, like Phil suggested for the other jobs. Maybe yeah. Sarah Roger, yeah. because she's not doing the Cemetery Commission, she might be interested in that. Sarah Brzee does everything. <laughs> but what else does she do? Well, she I always do? have to ask busy Works. people. And besides working, <laughs> I'm hoping that was Zooms. Well, let's see. Let's pass over it for tonight and see if we can snare in our uh, snare in our net, as they say. Does that make sense to everyone? <laughs> yeah, yes. but I also think Conservation Commission too. No, that's fine, Mary. I don't. I don't disagree with that at all. Um, and I agree. We should. We should write a letter. Um. Appointing Elizabeth Fortman to be assistant health officer. Move Elizabeth Fort Fortman as assistant health officer. I'll second. All those in favor of Elizabeth Fortman as assistant health officer, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So who is our who is our non-assistant oh, health officer? Rob Penny, the doctor. He's oh, the there you go. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, he's the slow runner on the road. I know he's going by your house. Yeah, he is. He does. He does. He does. I did check with Liz, and she she she's up for the job for assistant health officer. And I think that this might require some uh, select board signatures. We'll we'll talk about it later. But I mean, Rob's a Rob's a real doctor. I mean, he's an MD doctor. And as far as I know, blessedly we've had no issues. Has he had to act in any way, manner, shape, or form, Sarah, that you're aware of? Knock on wood, no. Yeah, I haven't. He hasn't mentioned anything to me. Okay. okay. So the fire department is going to be here in 10 minutes. Dorinda, how much time do you need for your treasurer's report? 
Probably not much. Okay, well, I would say if everyone agrees, let's let's hear from Dorinda and, uh, and then go back to the fire department when they arrive. Okay. Perfect. There's Jeff. <clears throat> okay. um, the first thing I wanted to mention was we finally got all the bills straightened out on the grant for the scoping study. Um, and they were supposed to contact you, Liz, and tell you to draw down on the rest of it. Yes, they did. But I thought we had. I thought I was just supposed to close something out. And I have a phone call to Jenny, and that is on my to-do list. And I keep forgetting. So thank you for reminding me, Dorinda. Okay. Um, so because that's all she. Her last email. So we, was yeah, was and I tried set. to do it on my own, and I couldn't. Um, and so she told me to call her, and I okay. and I need to do that. Okay. Um, the other thing is um, I started working, I was down at the office um, working in between with the new um, bookkeeper. So while he was working on stuff, I started to pull invoices for the highway emergency grant. Um, and I've been able to come up with about $45,000 in actual expenses and probably another, I want to say maybe 20 in um, payroll costs. So at this point, um, I'm going to need help to figure out where to come up with the um, rest of this money because we don't want to leave that sitting on the table. So remind me, it's $85,000 is the total? No, it's 80,000 and then we only get 72. So we have to come up with $80,000 worth of expenses. Yeah. So don't we get, help me out, Steve, don't we get to charge for our equipment that we use, not only payroll, but our equipment? Yes, yes, we do. So that should make up the balance of that, Dorinda, I would think. We just got to figure out what equipment was there for how many hours and what the hourly rate is. Steve, is that how it works? Yeah, they go by FEMA rates. Okay. Right. Um, <clears throat> there was quite a bit of time devoted. And the other thing, which I think you're going to have to look at probably Steve and maybe, you know, Vic wasn't on as road commissioner then. So it's probably Steve who would have a better idea. But um, there may be other people out there. When I was going through invoices, I found some that were not marked as emergency repairs. But because they fell in that time frame, I felt that they were. And so you may want to look at what I pulled out. And there may be other things. I couldn't think of all the vendors that could possibly fall into this. So. Dorinda, on that, is there, a, is there a day next week that would work and I can come in and go through some of those invoices? Um, sure. Uh, let's see. Um, let me get back. Let me look at my schedule and I'll yep. let you know. Perfect. Okay, great. Well, good, good uh, start, Dorinda. We need, when, was, when's the deadline to finish that, complete that? Well, we actually have till I think it's December 31st which is another side of this that I don't know if you'd want to get it into this budget year or if you'd want to put it into next budget year. Um, so that's something to think about when you submit this, whether or not, you know, because the money would come in in that budget year. So the reimbursement, the reimbursement doesn't go back to when we spent the money. It's just whenever we get it, it's income. It would have to because we've certainly closed the books from 2019 a long time ago. Right, 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 right. So I would suggest sooner is always better. I don't know why we'd want to put it off. So let's make it a goal that we get it completed this year unless somebody has a reason, meaning before July 1st, unless someone has a reason not to do that. No. Or unless Dorinda has a reason why we ought to defer it. Well, I include, I include her in that in that offer, especially include her in that offer, but. Uh, well, I think it's more, I think you need to think about how this money is gonna be spent. And, you know, I think with the purchase of a road grader, possibly reducing the amount you borrow on that amount. And, exactly. 
or I know that in going through these bills, um, it became obvious that we were paying somebody to move our equipment all the time, possibly buying a trailer that would, so we wouldn't be paying that expense, plus we could probably move our equipment more often. So I think the board should probably look at this along with the highway department and figure out the best way to spend that money. And then depending on that, you know, how yep. you draw down on it. Yeah, I but know it, whenever we, whenever, and it, there are advantages to having our own trailer, but whenever we've looked at the trailer and looked at the number of potential moves that we do every year, even with some additional moves, it didn't seem to make economic sense in the past, but you know what? This is a good time to look at it and you're right. I like the idea of paying down on the grader. Do we, Steve, are we gonna need to uh, pay a deposit when we order this grader, do you know? Or do we just pay the whole amount when no. we No. We just right, pay we the don't whole need to the deposit. As, as far as I know, we don't need to deposit. Okay. That's what they said today. Okay, perfect. And a trailer, a trailer, Peter is uh, looking into that. Uh, is uh, with a municipal discount, brand new, is about twenty thousand dollars. Yep. And uh, Shane pointed out that uh, uh, you know in the past, I guess we, uh, which I, I I think you know, looking out as a private citizen, we we state we got on one one stretch of ditching or something like that. And we stayed on that road. And uh, if we had to move, that's where it cost us. But I, I think in the big scheme of things, uh, there may be more moves because if we're gonna uh, adhere to the uh, uh, ANR and uh, local roads, we're gonna have to move around a little bit more to get uh, compliance. Yeah. Well, it's certainly it's certainly a good thing to uh, it's certainly a good thing to look at. The other the other issue that I've had on my radar for a while is our uh, <laughs> either really getting our existing wood chipper repaired if that's if that's uh, even feasible or if not we need a new or good good used wood chipper. Not having that piece of equipment is going to be detrimental. We use that when we use it. We need it. How much do those run with our discount? Do you think, Vic? Do you know, Peter? Um, Eighty between between eighty ninety thousand. Wow, hey, Peter. I'm sorry. How much did you say? I think Abe Lewis told me between forty and fifty thousand. Yeah, if you want to get a good one, you're up to seventy, eighty thousand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And how do we find Probably. out? If I'm sorry. The problem with wood chippers is they they tend to get the bejesus beaten out of them if you don't if you don't use them correctly. So buying a used one would be uh, would be sketchy. Maybe I don't know. I don't. I don't it's all good. It's all good stuff to think about, and it 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 corroborates what what Dorinda is saying that this is this is an opportunity to 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 solve a to solve a problem and not not have to go to the bank, which wouldn't be a bad thing. So. Victor, I guess I guess what I'm just a minute, Mary. I, I guess what I'm suggesting, Victor, is that you guys you guys think about this and and come to us with a recommendation. Sure. Because I think it is. I mean, I'm not sure it's mandatory that we that we spend this money on highway, but it's likely that that's where it should uh, should go. I would think. Yeah, I think you're absolutely correct. The uh, either one of the option of paying down the uh, grader, or uh, if you want to get, uh, which we'll have to discuss. If you want to get a trailer, that would be also advantageous. Yep. And uh, how, how do we find out if we can get the the wood chipper fixed? Well, I I, I don't know. Have you gotten involved in this at all, Vic? Only thing I ever I saw was you know I think that I I don't know uh, you know they don't use that a lot. they haven't used that a lot recently but uh, um, the issue with it is uh, that I saw was that uh, you know they would uh, you have to 
if that brush, if you cut that brush and it gets dragged or you put it in the, uh, the excavator and it gets, it gets gravel on them, it just chews those, uh, those uh, knives right up immediately. And then of course the thing's down, you gotta replace everything. But they did also have an issue with it plugging. And, uh, and in order to fix it, they actually had to have uh, the, uh, the excavator or something like that to pull the, uh, the chute off because it's so heavy and then you have to clean it. My, I, I remember those issues, but I also remember that it doesn't meet the current safety standards. So I don't know whether it's even legal to, to use the thing. Hey, what Peter. I'm understanding now is the reason they're not using it is it has a bad flywheel and Abe has been supposed to come down and fix it and he hasn't hasn't done it. I asked Shane about it not too long ago and he hasn't heard anything from Abe. He was going to reach out to him. I don't know. It, now it now it doesn't work and it may be and it may be unsafe and it may be dangerous. So the combination is I'm not interested in pouring a lot of money into something that isn't going to be very functional. Hey Peter, this is Paul. Um I could kind of speak speak to to where the status of the chipper got left. If everyone can hear me, yes, um, we can. Thank it, you. Yeah, what what ended up happening is that that's definitely out of compliance with with the height of the uh, the intake side, the length of it, uh, and a lot of the safety mechanisms on that no longer fall uh, within the OSHA specs. So uh, the the last time I had worked with Abe on it was he was willing to at least put those safety modifications on, but. That, that technically needs to be stamped and tagged as, as being passed. And he was not willing to, to go that far with it, only do the modifications just to kind of appease the court type of thing. Well, and, and are, you, are you aware that it has a bad flywheel? Is that true or is that just my imagination? Uh, no, at the last time that I had it, Abe, Abe had replaced the starter. The flywheel was good. We had replaced the flywheel once. The problem is you cannot any longer get um, that with that Cummins motor, you cannot get the proper starter. So you end up getting an AC Delco starter, which is compatible, but not comparable to, to what the stock one was. Um, so what would happen is the, uh, the starter gear on that would get stuck the motor would run and it would strip the uh, starter gear off of the starter. Um, and, and obviously along the way, after doing that a couple of times would, would eventually ruin the flywheel. So that, that could be at this point that that has happened again. Yeah. Okay. Well, suffice just to say, we don't have an operational or safe chipper. So I'm just throwing that into the mix for consideration. How old is that chipper? Got to be 25 or 30 years old, I think. That might tell you right there. Yeah. I mean, do you do you have any idea, Steve, how old that thing is? I do not. It's been around oh. a long time. It's at least it's at least as old as our grader. And our grader is what? 24. 23. Years old? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't owe us very much. Okay. Anything else, Dorinda? Quickly. Uh, nope. I, that's it. Okay, Mary. Dorinda, um, tell us about the uh, starting date of the new bookkeeper. And can you remind us of his name? I can't remember what his name is. His name is Mark and he started last Monday. And yeah. so he has worked uh, three days with Amy so far. They're only able to work two days together a week. So um, he is on He's done three days with her. So uh, he's doing, you know, they're, they're getting there. It's going to take a little bit. I think by next week, he's going to start um, entering information and Amy's going to start reviewing it and see how that goes. So is he coming into the office? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're now... Uh... We're now past our time for the uh, fire department, so I'd like to go back and uh, and bring up the fire department. We have Jeff with us. Jeff, hello. You can unmute yourself, please, Jeff. Okay, there I am. Okay, so um, apologies, Eric can't make it. He had a family issue popped up this afternoon, so he's got to deal with that. So you're stuck with me. Well, we're happy to have you. 
Thank you. Um, and how are you? How was your, how'd your surgery go? Everything's good? Surgery went well. I'm hobbling along. My quad's feeling issues to my knee and tibia right now, but that's part of the recovery, so. Yeah. <clears throat> well, good luck. I've been, think, I've been thinking of you. So uh, what we primarily wanted to do this tonight is get, and I know you weren't there because you were, you, you were on medical leave, but. I was on the operating table. Right. Uh, if you could just give us a report, hopefully you've, you've heard what, what went on and give us a report about the, uh, about the church fire. So, um, I, what I, what I had mostly what was on the news, so Sarah reported it, they were smoke coming out of the steeple. Um, quite frankly, when a fire's at that point, especially in a building that old and that type of construction, it's gone. Um, so Middlesex was called on a structure fire. What we have and all the departments in the in the Capital West District have um, sheets. I don't know how well you can see this. These are run sheet that yeah. when a fire is called in, what things automatically happen. And each each town has this sheet and it's a standard with Capital West. So um, two of our guys were able to show up. This being in the middle of the day on a Wednesday is the worst possible time for structure fires in Middlesex, Worcester, and Moortown, any place else, except for maybe Waterbury. Um, so Montpelier and Waterbury were called in as well. From the news reports, um, Waterbury ran the scene. <clears throat> When I got home from the hospital, there was a message on my phone from uh, Waterbury's battalion chief, which is their assistant chief, uh, to asking about any officers showing up. So I called later that evening and explained the situation and asked what happened. And, and uh, so the big thing was that that not only was Montpelier there, Waterbury was there. The best I can figure, there were five towns that were there in, a, in addition to Middlesex. Um, <clears throat> I've heard rumors and I haven't been able to talk to Waterbury yet about the water supply. If there was a water supply issue, obviously on a structure fire like that, the big calls is gonna be tankers from everywhere. Um, I think it even Barry, on the news, I saw Barry's uh, tower there. So, um, and that's the way mutual aid works. Whenever there's a structure, an active structure fire, we start calling in depending on where it is. So if it's, if it's up, in our neck of the woods, Peter, we're going to be calling in Montpelier and Worcester. If it's down in the village, it's going to be Montpelier, Waterbury, Moortown, um, Berlin. And then as it gets, as we need more assets, we'll be calling East Montpelier and uh, Barry. But anytime that Montpelier has a structure fire, they're automatically calling Barry City and vice versa. So this is not an unusual thing for Middlesex. We do currently have 10 people on the department. We have two applications in, and we're going to start having meetings again next month now with the new guidance for uh, fire and EMS to come out from the state um, late last week. So, and there again, that, that's not a unique issue to Middlesex. We just cannot get people to join. People do not want to volunteer for fire and EMS service. It's, it's not a Middlesex problem. It's not a Washington County problem. It's not a Vermont problem. It's a nationwide problem. Um, yeah. we've, we've tried, I mean, we're up there selling tickets for the bandstand concerts. We're out there visible. We go to the, the school when they have their, um, their spring um, thing for the PTA. Uh, we had, we're there on town meeting. We post front porch forums, front porch forum columns we've had open houses we just can't get people to come out and volunteer to be on fire departments it's it's just the way people are in this day and age yeah. i think well, the common it's, a, it's 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 certainly not a unique not a unique problem to middlesex at all um so so how many how many people ultimately responded from our fire department two two and so i was when i was, I was, when I was there and i'm just telling you i was i was there so i could see what was going on, but I could not, uh, I could not tell obviously what, what the, 
what the command was going on and who'd taken control of the scene. But our, our truck was parked way back up Route 2 all by itself with one person sitting in it and nothing happening. Wasn't, it was either, wasn't within a quarter mile of the, of the scene at all. It was just sitting there. It was, it was probably uh, Gary Dillon, who is the chief of Waterbury, and they have approximately 50 people in their department. Um, right. He was directing the scene, so he probably had them sitting up there for whatever reason. Um, because obviously the street is real small and you can't get a lot of people in there. Uh, well, they have I, a I understand there. all that, but all, all I would tell you is they had like a conga line of tankers going down through there, five or six of them, and there's there our tanker was nowhere in sight. So I don't, I just, it looked like a horrible response to me to be to be blunt, and uh, to make matters worse, um, a couple of days later, um, we got a a polite but firm a letter from Bill Frazier, uh, saying basically. Uh, enough is enough. Your fire department isn't able to respond. Uh, they don't seem to be able to recruit enough people to have a viable fire department, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I, we don't need to go into all the details of that tonight, but he said he also had uh, Bob Gowan, the, the chief in Montpelier, uh, send me a report, which I meant to share with you and I didn't, but I will, uh, just showing uh, what's been going on over the last few years. And Going back to 2015, uh, Montpelier responded to seven fires in Middlesex. We received mutual aid two times. In 2016, we responded to Middlesex nine times, received mutual aid one time. In uh, 17, uh, eight responses, two mutual aid responses, excuse me, 17 and 18, they responded 15 times, no mutual aid. 19, 13 times no mutual aid, and 2020, 11 times no mutual aid. Okay, so in a very nice way, this isn't the way it's supposed to work. So we we provide mutual aid when they call us. If they don't call us, we can't provide mutual aid. He says so, they call, they call, and we don't respond. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not I, this is what they told me. I'm, this is their this is their information. But they were very nice. They just said you have a serious problem with your fire department. They're unable to do the job that they're supposed to do. They have have an inadequate number of people, and they're they're not available during the daytime. He said Worcester, on the other hand, somehow seems to be able to do all those things, and I don't know why that is, and and we can't, but. Um, and the other side of this is, and I'll, uh, and I'll ask Steve to speak up, but Steve uh, spoke to the Waterbury chief who said basically the same thing is, you know, this, this is not working for us. We end up responding to your fires and providing your fire service and we're not getting any compensation. So Worcester respond, Worcester has two people in town during the day. There's assistant chief and then one of the, one of the, uh, the captain who's retired. That's what they've got. Moortown has, I know their chief is on their road department and I don't, I think they've got one or two during the day. Um, Waterbury, like I said, they've got 50 people that, that they draw from, but I don't know how many they draw from during the day because during the day when people show up, it's an awful lot of people with gray hair. So I get, I get that, but I'm just saying if you're pulling from a, if you're pulling from a pool of 50 people, that's a lot different than pulling from a pool of seven or eight or nine people. I, 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 Jeff, I, I truly, I truly am not trying to give you guys a hard time. I know you've tried. I know you've tried to recruit people. I, I'm just saying that um, I am feeling personally, and I think the select board is feeling that we're getting, getting boxed in a little bit and or maybe more than a little bit. And uh, we have promised both, uh, both Waterbury and Montpelier that that we will get we will get back to them, and that we will try and implement some kind of solution sooner sooner rather than later, whatever that solution is, and whether we whether we I, I don't know what we do. I mean, do we hire them to provide the fire service? Do we hire them as permanent backup? I I don't know what the what the solution is, but. 
right now, it's pretty clear to me, and I know you might disagree, but it's pretty clear to me that we can't provide an adequate fire response in Middlesex, and not just not just during the daytime. I mean, he said, uh, they both said other times of the day in the evening, it's the same story. They show up and sometime later, somebody shows up from, uh, from Middlesex and by then it's all over when that big house fire was up here. Uh, we had a very, very late response. I, what house fire was this? The one up off uh, Molly Supel, whenever it was two years ago. Uh, we were first on scene. Uh, he didn't seem to think so. And again, all I'm all I'm telling you is what he told me. But the question is, you know, the question for me is, and for the select board is, what is the answer to this? Because what we're doing now is is not working. And well, I, I will I will tell you that I talked to Waterbury just like four, five or six years ago to see what they were charging. Um, Duxbury. And at that time, it was $250,000 a year for fire coverage. Yep. Uh, for Moortown, they charged them for that stretch long route two, they charged them $3,000 a year. We currently do not charge Moortown anything for the coverage we provide them from the Minuski to about Lover's Lane, but we get called further than that. Uh, that's that's if there is a fire or a car issue, you know, a car crash or something, we get called, and Moortown does not unless we call them in. So, um, with Waterbury, the times that, that that they have called us, it's usually only for a tanker, and we have been providing tankers, a tanker for them, every call that I I can remember that they called us out on. In the last couple of years, and especially, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I have no no data from Waterbury, so that's good to hear. But, but how can it be that in two years we haven't helped Montpelier at all? Zero. They they haven't called. They haven't called us. They they gave you they gave you numbers of, of times that we responded, but they didn't give you numbers of calls that they called us. We've gone there for both direct fire support and for station coverage when they've gone to Barry City. Well, that may be the case, but the numbers they, they gave me don't reflect that. All I'm, all I'm saying is, and all I'm, I'm suggesting to the select board is, we need to drill down on this and figure out what the answer is. And maybe it is, maybe it is getting Montpelier or Waterbury to help us out in some kind of formal way and we pay them some money, whether it's per call or or on a on an annual basis or or something but uh i just i'm i'm just very uncomfortable that we're not able to provide the service that that people would expect us to provide that's that's the way i would i would put it and i'm not i'm not blaming you i'm not blaming the people who serve on the fire department i know you guys are trying to do your uh do your best but it may just be that the makeup of our community is such that we can't there aren't enough people who are interested in in serving on the fire department. Is there only? I believe there are only two or three people on the fire department now who live in Middlesex. Uh, well, if you count the part of Moortown that's part of Middlesex, then um, yeah, and I mean, Doug Hansen lives a tenth of a mile into Montpelier, so he's essentially Middlesex. He can get yeah, to the same capacity. All, all I'm saying is, he doesn't live yeah, in Middlesex. He lives in very nearby, and he's been a been a been a loyal person. But he doesn't live in Middlesex. It's just amazing to me that Waterbury can get can get 50 people. I mean, is that a larger community? Yes, it is. But holy mackerel! Well, that's it's all, it's also a combination of two departments because they combine Waterbury Center and Waterbury into one department. No, so it's, I, I understand, but but still, that's that's a lot of folks. Well, apparently they have anyway, a lot Jeff, of like I appreciate you I appreciate you being here tonight I'm sorry the I'm sorry the chief can't be here I hope he'd be here um but I think what what we're going to want to do is uh devote at least one or more of our select board meetings in the near future to talk about this issue and figure out what next steps are whether we should 
set up a meeting with Waterbury and Montpelier, how we should do that, who should be included, et, et cetera. I mean, we're, we're not trying to uh, close you guys out of the process. We want you to be part of the process and we value your, uh, your input, but we're determined to find, to find some way to provide better, uh, better fire service. Well, when I can get back on the road again, I'll go look at, at run sheets, calls, and see if their numbers jive with our numbers as to what we have and how much they've responded. And I think part of their thing is that they may be leaning on is that EMS. I mean, I am I am the EMT in town pretty much full time. And, and we pay my peer ambulance to show up. So, and there are, there are some of their crew members that want nothing to do with us helping them out on calls. So I think part of their frustration that they're saying is, well, nobody shows up for fast squad calls. No, these were, just, these were just fire calls. There was no no discussion about fast squad or EMS. I, I just find those numbers that, that they spouted off as high compared to the numbers that we've had of structure fires in the last couple of years. So I'll have to go back and look at our call sheets and see where we are. Okay. Well, they're saying they're saying just to be clear, they're saying fires, not necessarily structure fires. So they could well, be if, fires, could be could be car fires, could be who knows what. If you could send me that list that they sent you, so I have something to, to go with. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Um, other board members, any any questions? Yeah, Phil. Um, you know, not really a question, Peter. I just wanted to go on record as saying I. I really wholeheartedly agree with you know um, what you're talking about. I think this is very serious. Um, I think it's also embarrassing uh, for our town, and I think we need to do everything we can possibly do to look into this and find a good solution. You know, we're, we we have considerable resources wrapped up in a fire department that's not able to provide a real resource as far as safety in this community. So. Um, and it's been, you know, this has been going on now for a while. There was a time when we had a really viable fire department, but that those days seem to be over. And we can't ignore this, uh, and we do need to dig into it. And I'm certainly willing to do whatever I can to help us resolve this. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Anything? So, uh, what what I'm going to suggest is. Um, that we all think about what the next step in this process should be. Do we want to, do we want to handle this as a board? Do we want to uh, have a subcommittee of the board uh, meet with these other departments and dig into the issues at our department? How do we want to, uh, how do we want to handle it? My, my first thought was this is important enough that we all need to be involved in it. I just don't know if that's, if that's too unwieldy having every trying to arrange uh, meetings where everybody can be there, but uh, I really do do view this as an important public safety priority. So I don't know what your thoughts are. Um, I'm going to try and get some more information. I we promised uh, we promised uh, the Montpelier chief and the Waterbury chief that we would get after get back to them after tonight's meeting and let them know what our let them know what our plan was. Peter, do we have Bill Frazier on the um, agenda for our next meeting? No, we do not. Okay. I mean, he is he is willing to come. I just I I mean, they're all willing to come. Yes. Yeah. I just thought it was important for us to talk about this and meet with our fire department um, before we started talking to these other uh, folks. I will say both both Waterbury and Montpelier are willing and anxious. To participate in any way they can to help us with our fire department, whether that's providing direct fire protection, whether it's providing training. I mean, they are very willing to try and help us any way they can, but they want us to have, if we're going to be continue to be in the mutual aid uh, program, they want us to be a viable fire department and be able to respond. It's understandable. I think it'd be helpful to get the same kind of data breakdown for Waterbury that um the chief in Montpelier sent you so so Jeff does does dispatch have these records of who got called out on different fires yeah I don't know how long how long they keep them 
but they that's yes they have that that information well why don't i why don't i try and approach them and see if they can they can get us what get us what their records show and at the same time jeff if you look at your records um and i'll see what uh and i'll see what montpelier can come up with to uh to help us also i mean i want to be i want to be really sure we're we're looking at the right information mm. and i want to be really sure we're we're being fair. It is interesting, and we need to we need to move on, um, but move on for tonight. But um, uh, Bill Fraser did what he said was a back of the envelope uh, financial analysis, looking at our current fire department budget and debt service, and he said, uh, including the debt service, which of course we can't. We can't really throw in the debt service, but you said, including the debt service, um, it looks very much like they could provide all the fire service we need, just like the ambulance, and just take it over and do it. Now, he said that, and then he was quick to tell me that they don't have a tanker, so I don't know how that would work. Maybe they would buy our tanker. I don't know. Um, but we would likely be looking at, I mean, our debt service is roughly is roughly, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it's roughly $40,000 a year. The budget's roughly 60,000. We're talking about $100,000. Um, so that would be, I mean, we're gonna have to continue to pay the fire service on the, on the, uh, on the building uh, or the debt service on the building, obviously, which is the big chunk of that debt service. But I gotta tell you, if, if it comes down to it and it means, you know, it means more money. If that means we have real fire protection, I think it's important. We have to have it. So anyway, that's that's very premature, but it didn't look like when I asked Bill the last time I met with him because I couldn't remember. And I, I said, Bill, I think it was 20 years ago. He said, I'm, I'm actually looking at it. It was 26 years ago when you met with us the last time with this problem. So anyway. Oh anyway. So the other thing to look at is not here very, very reluctantly takes their tower out of Montpelier. Also, when you're looking at calls for mutual aid, Montpelier will, will call Barry City in for mutual aid over Berlin, who's closer. So you, you may also want to look at how Montpelier's kind of saying, well, we don't get any, any mutual aid from Middlesex. They're also not calling Berlin in. So well, the thing that Jeff, I'm, I'm, I'm really not trying to give you a hard time, but what he said was, I said, you know, he didn't say they weren't calling us. He was saying they were calling us and we were unable to respond. Now, I don't know what calling means. Does that mean dispatch calls us out or does that mean they call us directly? It would be dispatch and I disagree that they've been calling us. Okay, well, we'll get to the bottom of that. Okay. Yeah, Phil, you had something else? I was just going to say, you know, rather than do a he said, she said, maybe it would make sense to have Bill Frazier um, call into the next meeting and let us have a discussion with him um, and maybe even Montpelier's chief um, so that we can keep this thing moving. Should we ask Waterbury to participate in that as well or just yeah. do it? Well, Peter, didn't, Peter, didn't you just say that Steve had some uh, information that he could share with us that he talked to the chief in uh, Waterbury? Yes. I, I did have uh, basically the same information, some of the same comments as, as uh, Montpelier had. Uh, and one of the key things uh, was that they know that there's a recruiting problem. We don't have the people uh, to be able to, to respond. But regardless of that, I, I think there is something there for a problem. We need a solution and, and probably the fire department can be part of the solution, but our current fire department. But uh, I think we need to look at all the facts and, and Phil, to your point of Bill Frazier coming to the next meeting, I think, it's, I think it's too soon. I think we need to get some facts and, and uh, uh, some figures out there so that we can really see what's going on and, and then maybe get uh, uh, Gary Dillon and, and Bob uh, involved in a meeting uh, at a later date. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to go with that too, Steve. Yeah, this is, neither one of these guys is, is saying, you know, 
we're going to stop supporting you uh, tomorrow at right. all. So it's not like not it's not like this is an emergency crisis. So I guess I would suggest I would suggest we try and uh, I'll I'll contact Montpelier and try to get uh, real data real data from them, not just the not just the uh, Bill Fraser's email, and I'll also contact Capital West and see if they can give us uh, what do we call it call sheets or run sheets? What do you call it, Jeff? He's muted. Jeff, you're yeah. muted. It would just be calls, call numbers. Okay, call numbers. Okay, okay. And uh, and put that on the agenda, put that on the agenda for our next meeting. And uh, uh, Jeff, I would appreciate it if, if, uh, if the fire department could uh, participate in that as well. And I will share whatever numbers we have, I will share them with you, uh, share them with you before, uh, before the meeting. Okay, um, I'm I'm pretty much sure Doug will not be able to make it because he's he usually works till eight or nine o'clock this time of year on Tuesday nights. Okay, okay. So okay. he's deli delivering propane. That's his job. Yeah, I got it. I got it. So are we all set for tonight, everyone. We've got we've got Sandy here, and she's shaking her head back and forth. I think she's ready to go. So <laughs> is the next meeting in two weeks? Yes. Yeah, well, it's, well, it's the no. uh, second. It's the uh, it's the first, the first it's, Tuesday in April. So it's April sixth. Yep. Fifth. Um, sixth. Okay. Yep. I, I should be on the road before then. So. Okay. Well, good luck with your uh, good luck with your rehab. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. I'm out of here. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so Sandy, welcome. I'm sorry we're a little uh little behind schedule here, but we're happy to have it's you. Only here two minutes. Us. And uh Sandy and I had a little uh back and forth on this on the subject of uh marijuana, and I suggested to her that it would be appropriate for her to uh appear at a select board meeting, and here she is. So oh with that, do you do you know all of us, Sandy? Should we introduce I think so. I think so. You know the cast of characters? I think so. <laughs> okay. okay. You're all famous. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're all famous or, or infamous. That infamous. The, dark, the dark visage on your screen is Vic Dwyer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um so so with that, Sandy, you're uh, you're on. Thank you for coming. Okay. Well, I just wanted to to see if we could get it on our menu for the vote next year. Um, as you know, several uh, neighboring towns put it on their vote and it was passed and um, it was passed in most towns in Vermont. I think three towns did not pass it, but most towns that put it on the ballot did pass it. And and so I'm just hoping to get it on the ballot and let the voters decide. I, I did put it on front porch forum to see what, you know, people thought and I got all positive reviews on it. Everybody thought it would be good for business. Um, it would bring more business to the existing Middlesex businesses. Um, so yeah, I just think it would be a, a win-win for everybody. Um, and, but you know, I mean, the basic thing is we have to get it on the ballot to even let the voters decide. Yeah. Yes, Sarah. Just for, hi, Sandy, this is Sarah Merriman. Um, I'm taking minutes, so you keep talking about it. Could you just say, say specifically what you want? Oh, um, <laughs> it's the retail pot bill to be on the uh, ballot okay. next year. So what that, and just, just remind me, I mean, I read about that when it was, when it was coming up, but basically it's a bill where the town said, yes, we would allow you to have a retail pot operation in our community. Is that right. The state, longer? the state said it's, it's legal, but each town has to vote on it separately. But then the state promulgates the regulations and rules and all that right. stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I guess I guess the question is, and it's certainly <clears throat> way before town meeting at this point in time, but um, there there are two there are two ways this could happen. One way would be that the select board would would put it on the uh, put it on the town meeting agenda, and uh, it would be discussed. It would be an article presented in that manner. The other way is a petition. Uh, where you and other folks would go around and get how many signatures, Sarah? 75. 
75 signatures on a petition and that it would appear on the appear on the town meeting agenda as a petitioned article. I don't know how the other board members feel about this or if they're ready to decide tonight, I'd be fine putting that article on the town meeting agenda myself, but I don't know how that everybody else feels. I don't have a problem with it. No. You know, I think it's, it's a, a move that's happening statewide. So why, you know, why people go out and gather the signatures? I think, you know, we can put it on and let people vote. Steve, you agree? That's fine. So that was easy, Andy. <laughs> Pardon? That was easy. Yeah. Well, wait, wait a minute. So, so Sarah, do we need, we probably need to vote on this, right? No, you'll vote on it when you vote on the warning, uh, when you approve the warning in right. January okay. of 2020. So you, will, so you will remember, and I will try and remember, and everyone else will remember that we I have will not remember. Andy will have to call me. That we, pro <laughs> that we promised to, uh, that we promised to put this on the warning. I'll make it, um, I'll put a draft 2022 town meeting warning right now and add it right at the very top. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so Sandy, good. thanks very much. It is, it is interesting. Uh, my, my sons and their families live in Colorado and we had a family get together out there and we all decided we were going to have a family field trip to the pot shop. It was very, uh, <laughs> very Enlightening. entertaining and interesting, a little intimidating. When you walk in, you walk into a rug and they take and they take your picture and they take a picture of your driver's license. So I am now I'm now oh. registered as a legal a legal pot buyer in Colorado, which really wasn't my intent when I went in there. But anyway, they have had they have had relatively few problems in Colorado. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, I mean, it's a good it's good for taxes. It's good for jobs. You know, it's 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 a win win thing. We need the money. The state needs the money. So. <laughs> Well, and, and guess what? A little economic activity in Middlesex wouldn't hurt, uh, yeah. wouldn't hurt a bit either. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I, I appreciate you following following up with this. And uh, Thank yeah, you. I can't, couldn't get on this year's ballot, but it'll be on next year's. Yeah. Okay. How many towns? How many towns? Uh, how many towns approved it? I think it was like twenty-seven towns approved it. Three towns disapproved it. Yeah. So 27 out of what are there, 240 towns, something like that? Yeah, 220, something like that. Yeah, something like that. So anyway, we're not we're not at the end of the line yet. There'll be, yeah. <laughs> there'll be plenty more next year, I'm sure. But, right, uh, we could be ahead of the curve. <laughs> there you go, there you go. <laughs> Thank Rand? you very much, and uh, we, we welcome participation <laughs> in our select board meeting. Wait yes. Randy's Randy, got a you, question. Before you go, oh, I'm sorry, Randy. Uh, I, I might just suggest that, uh, you know, there are folks out there that have no clue what this is and, and maybe putting out a link to the bill that you're proposing or whatever to be added uh, just for informational purposes for folks to read would be, would be helpful. So I know uh, I'm one of those who know nothing about what you're proposing and, and um, you know, I, I find um, that as I get, uh, more experienced in in uh, my life that I I tend to read more of this stuff than I've ever cared to before. So <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, just a suggestion. Good um, Thank you. No, I think that's I think that's good, and uh, uh, it is it is likely likely, but not necessarily guaranteed that we'll be having a traditional uh, select board meeting next year. But we'll town see, meeting. Uh, what happened? Town meeting, I'm sorry, not select board. Yeah. I apologize. Thank yes. you very much, Sandy. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you're you. welcome. Okay. Victor, you're not you're not brightening up too much, Victor, but you're still there. We're ready for our road commissioner's report. You're muted. Turn on the lights. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. There you go, Mary. Oh. There you go. That's better. That's better. I know you could help me out, Mary. I said that right along. There you go. All right. So thank you. Um, what do you want? The good news or the bad news first? <laughs> I like the bad news first. 
Okay. Well, we really we continue we continue to have uh, issues with uh, with the trucks. Uh, the uh, the Western Star had an issue with its PTO uh, when they were fixing it. They said that they didn't understand. Uh, it was surprising that uh, it didn't break down on the road. And I think that bill is around twenty seven hundred dollars if you want. And also a week before they took the truck to. Uh, Waterbury, uh, we're using Bootsies, or, or Shane is using Bootsies rather than to go back to the dealer because we're out of warranty. And uh, they had some issues with the brakes. Um, International was uh, had some issues with uh, the Jake brake, but I guess they decided that it wasn't. Uh, they couldn't figure it out right now, so keep going. And. Uh, that was about the uh, the the uh, repairs. Um, Shane and the boys did get uh, thirty loads, I believe it is, of uh, aggregate out of Northeast Aggregate for uh, you know mud uh, for mud season if they needed it. It stockpiled in the yard. They got uh, three quarter an inch and a half and. Uh, They, uh, Garrison, since the last meeting, you know, we've, we've had, we've been plowing and sanding and, uh, last weekend, uh, they plowed on Sunday and they did come in Saturday and on, on the normal Friday, they remember the high winds. There were some, uh, quite a few, uh, branches around in the, in the road. So they took care of that. Um, other issue is, and I've heard Peter mention it, there's, uh, if there's, a uh, Shane is looking into it, and uh, because uh, I guess Unifirst charges us quite a bit, and they're looking into for for for. Uh, I think he talked to you, uh, Peter, about the. Uh, he did. I think our I think our contract. I forget the date. I think it's Shane knows when it is. I think it's October. Our contract is up. Yeah, and they charge you like something like five thousand bucks to get out of it if you don't, and it automatically renews. Yeah, we have to give him. I, the, he's got it written down how many days right. of this we have to give him. Right, right. Anyway, so um, what is it? Foley's is a, a, right now is a, um, appears to be a much better option. And then uh, Shane said that he that we uh, we talked about another option, um, but until we get back from uh, you know resolve that with. Uh, uh, Unifirst and uh, see what actually Foley's going to do. We will uh, wait to uh, let you know about that, what the best deal is. I can weigh in on the contract. The last contract I have indicates that it's a five year contract. Right. And it's not up until May of 22. Okay. So that's still a way to go on it. You have to give them a 90 day written notice. Mm -hmm. Otherwise the contract, at least a minimum of 90 days. Otherwise it automatically rolls into another five year contract. Right. <laughs> uh, right. So, right. It's crazy, it's crazy. It's, it, but the savings that you could get by using one of the other providers, I guess, um, would even justify paying the five grand and just get away from it. Plus, uh, I don't think anybody over there really cares for the uniforms that our university is given. That was my that's my opinion from what they said. And the other thing is, uh, like to uh, was it June 28th and August 29th, uh, we're signed up to uh, rent a roadside mower, and uh, that's proving out to be cheaper than hiring the guy to just come around. Uh, twice a year um, and uh, they have it for uh, uh, unlimited hours. And, and I believe the guy that I, as I understand it, they, uh, they also deliver it and come get it. So for about what you, uh, you can get one plow, uh, one mowing, they get, they, they, they have the, uh, the, the mower for uh, um, enough to do it twice. Of course, we do have to put somebody on it, but uh, it, uh, Shane says that's not an issue. Good. 
That's where we are. And what what you wanted me to look into the wood chipper? Well, if we, I guess I guess what we want what I think we want you to look into is if all of a sudden we have an extra eighty thousand dollars, roughly. Right. Yeah, how would, 72, how yeah. would you recommend we or the road department recommend we spend it? Should we buy a trailer? Should we fix the wood chipper? Should we get a new wood chipper? Perfect. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Because we've also got a. Uh, we're also due to uh, get a new pickup truck, also, I believe, this spring. That is correct. So we'll have to look at with, with the roadside mowing. If the crews pick that up and not subbing it out, um, you know, if by the time you figure in the labor and the rental fees and whatnot, you're saying that the, that's a savings overall, including the labor. No, you just get two different, you get to change. You have the flexibility of doing more of it because it's unlimited hours in that week's time. And you, and, and, and of course, this was the uh, counterpoint uh, that we, we would might have to ask for is somebody could run it on the weekend, which might be, uh, all depends how it works out, but you know, you would have overtime involved in that. So I guess the only That's other great. question. Go ahead. The only other question I'd have about it would be, um, I know one thing that we've struggled in the past, just keeping on the town plan for, you know, the maintenance around around town. And if we're stuff that we were originally subbing out and we're pulling back into the crews, what does that do for the overall plan? Um, we able to stay on track? I believe so. Yeah, that's the thought. And and plus you you know you're you're going to get a better uh, better job. This mower does mow uh, mow better than the, theoretically uh, from what they say it mows better than the uh, one that we hired. Although the guy with the hired one did uh, a fair job. Thank you. I would also I would also think potentially, and we need to we need to look into it. We could either we could either hire somebody to come in and and operate that that machine if we had a qualified person or hire somebody to come in and uh you know maybe a retired road person who has a cdl or something and do some truck driving so one of our guys could drive the machine but I know when, shane, when shane discussed it with me he included he included labor labor in the analysis and we were going to save quite a bit of money the only question was exactly what randy brought up is when we put a guy in that mower, he isn't in one of our trucks or on the backhoe or the excavator or the grader. So we lose something. Uh, we lose something on that side. That's true. But if, if it's a net, net, net savings and we can keep up with our, with our schedule. I mean, we were, we were proposing last year that we would buy our own, our own roadside mower. And that was going to be a big expense and it was going to likely spend a lot of time sitting around, which is not a good use of our, uh, our money. If you need something for, for a hundred hours a year, I don't think you want to buy a brand new one and have it sit around. That doesn't make right. a lot of sense. Right. So That's Victor, give us, give us a little update on the, on the big item, which is sitting over at the town garage right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that uh, yeah, if anybody wants to watch the the John Deere Grader uh, run tomorrow, I think it. I think he said they were going down on Brook Road at seven o'clock. So, here's your chance, Dorinda. Right I'll there. Watch out. Looking for volunteer operators. Yeah, I thought Mary might come down and watch us. You know. Not at seven a.m. Uh uh. <laughs> <laughs> and but no. Um, seven p.m. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the salesman from John Deere is going to be there tomorrow morning, and uh, they had the grader today, but we didn't have the insurance on it, as I understand, until tomorrow. So they only just drove it around. They all got familiar with it. They drove it around the yard, but tomorrow they're going to take it out on the road and try it out. Now we did uh, actually uh, look into a cat. Uh, Shane and the crew, uh, some of the crew went to uh, uh, Richmond down to Milton Cat and uh, looked at one in the yard. Um, 
it was uh, a little difficult, uh, according to Shane, to get uh, the salesman from CAT to uh, to commit to uh, to a uh, uh, demonstration of the rig. He did come up, and uh, we were supposed to get a quote from him today at around noon. Uh, I did talk to Shane. Uh, I I think it was like. 3.30, quarter of four tonight, and uh, he did not mention that. He just told me that uh, the other guy was going to be there tomorrow morning, that being the, the John Deere guy. So I don't know. Uh, both quotes are in the hands of uh, Shane, and uh, at, the, at, at some point here, we're going to, if we do get another one, we're going to compare them, and uh, we're going to talk about it. Uh, it appears that... Uh, uh, Everyone leans towards uh, everyone on the, the town crew that would possibly be operating the grader is leaning towards the John Deere. But nothing is cast in stone yet. And we'll, well, we'll our, work goal, compare those. our goal, I believe, would be uh, Vic, to have a recommendation for you guys and, uh, and quotes to look at at our next board meeting because we need to get this thing ordered if we're going to have it here. Yeah. Uh, exactly. That was, yeah, we, uh, that's exactly what uh, Shane's plan is, uh, would like to do. And I mean, if you want it quicker, we could have a 15 minute select board meeting. I think you said that, but, uh, you know, we well, can I, think as long as, I mean, I, 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 I kind of leave it up to you guys, but uh, my understanding is if we can get it ordered by, by the first part of April, we're in good shape. If if it all of a sudden it looks like that isn't the case, then we could have an emergency select board meeting. Okay, we'll check in. You're absolutely right. Uh, from what I understand, is uh, uh, ninety days. Yeah, right. And 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 like the advantage of uh, ordering the thing, uh, ordering a grader is that, uh, for instance, if uh, it goes, to, if all the if you have some add-ons that you want to buy, some extras, uh, that if they do it at the uh, factory, it's a lot cheaper than if they have to do it at the uh, dealership afterwards by a tremendous amount. From what the from what the uh, from what the salesman has said. So, okay. But uh, we will give you a proposal and uh, a recommendation, and uh, we'll show you the options. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, Dorinda. Can I get a copy of that? I'd like to start um, looking into the financing of of what the um, what the cost is on that piece or whatever. If yeah, yeah, and then I can start shopping the uh, financing. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll give you that uh, as just as soon as I get it. Okay. Are, are these sales are these salesmen recommending the piece of equipment or have we given them uh, a base specification that we're looking for um, to make sure that they're bidding apples to apples and the pieces of equipment aren't you know in different classes or have different add-ons or whatever that uh, as oh, the well, excuse me go ahead you done uh, just that as we were comparing, I was just thinking about what you said about add-on equipment and stuff like that. Um, you know, sometimes these manufacturers include stuff in, in one model and others, it's an option. So just thinking about an apples to apples comparison. And we'll tell you exactly, uh, um, just for instance, uh, slope grade, uh, slope uh, uh, control is uh, supposedly, uh, it's an option with Caterpillar and uh, if you buy one with uh, joysticks on it from John Deere, it comes with it, as they say. So uh, the, uh, it's fair to say uh, we have pointed out, uh, we've done the best we can to compare apples to apples as far as the size of the grader. Size of the grader. It uh, uh, has come out that, uh, you know, it's been a little ambiguous uh, that uh, you know the uh, one deal one 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 uh, dealer says no, this size machine is compared to that size, and uh, we're doing checks on it to make sure that it is. Uh, 
that. Uh, the other thing, the other thing we're going to do, Randy, and I, I know Shane has already done done some of this. Is uh, there are towns around that have these graders, and talk to them and say, "How's the grader work for you? Have you had problems with the dealer? Has the service been good? If, did you need service? You know those those kind of questions." So um, we're trying to do our homework homework the best uh, the best that we can. But we're coming down to the wire here, so we're. It may well be. It may well be. You only get one quote, too. I, I wouldn't. Uh, like I said, uh, I don't know if that guy got one back to us uh, at at one point, as you know, Peter. The guy didn't even want to come. Oh no, I gave it to him. I gave it to him with both barrels, and he promised me we'd have a quote. But um, well, and he was. He was that business right up front. Yeah. It's, um, I do. I know, like at Capstone, we often, especially because this is a big purchase. Um, you know, I know you're saying, oh, you might not even get a bid, but to to get a third to to get a third bid, is if there is an option for that, another company, somebody that we've worked with in the past. Like, I, I don't know anything about Greater. Sorry, but I'm just throwing that out there that making sure that we're getting the best bid. Is there another company that we can ask as well? Who who are we dealing with other than Milton Cat? John Deere. Right, but is it Nortrax? If, if Nortrax. There's Nortrax. Um, ultimately, I have to believe you know we could get a quote from another Caterpillar dealer if it if it comes down to it. I I I agree. I want to make sure we have at least one other uh, quote. It definitely definitely seems like Cat and John Deere are the preeminent. Uh, graders and the ones that most of the towns seem to have and the ones that the state has also, right, Victor? That's correct. Yeah. So hey, Peter, quick there question. Companies that we've worked with? Yeah. Peter, well, Peter, we had dealt with Beauregard equipment for, for the Cabelco excavator. Did did we at least call them at, up at Beauregard's to 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 get a bid from them? I know in the past they've been pre pretty competitive with a lot of their pricing on loaders and graders. Shane contacted them, Paul. Uh, they indicated that uh, that grader would be a case grader, I believe. Yep. And case, and case is not going to build them anymore. Oh, understood. Good deal. Okay. And then we checked out with uh, um, Komatsu and um, another company, but their graders are smaller than the two that that we that, that were desired by the road crew. Yeah, and I think. Komatsu was nice of a machine that at the time we had bid or, or had looked at it last year, they uh, didn't offer a six wheel drive model, unfortunately. So right. we'll put them out. Right. So do you know of any other option other than Cat or, or uh, uh, John Deere? No, I, I think that would be the only other one. <clears throat> Case would have been the only one I had in mind um, right. that, I, that I'm aware of. That's... Uh, I think that's about it then. Right, and I don't think you can move around. I think, uh, correct me if I'm uh, saying something that's not, not accurate, is uh, I don't think you can buy uh, either a John Deere or, or, uh, or, or a cat off uh, anybody but these local guys here because they the uh, outside, they won't enter into their territory, will they? Yeah, and I think that, even more so when you're when you're talking about municipal buying new with the municipal discount you you don't have a choice who you deal with at least That's as right. far as municipal goes yeah yeah thanks paul for uh for, do, for yeah, thank you paul well yeah. i have to be, i have to believe one way or the other we'll get a we'll get a quote from uh from from cat i i couldn't agree more liz i want to make sure we have two i mean we we have a pretty good idea what these things cost but you know, the, there can be differences in trade in values, et cetera, et cetera. I know, Steve, you said you said there was some kind of a, a deal where if we went from our current grader to a John Deere, they had some special deal or discount for changing brands or. Is that you're muted, Steve? Yeah, John Deere had a program where that if you were trading in a competitive a competitor's uh, machine they were giving you extra money but I, I it's like vic says you're going to have to get the things side by side and compare them apples to apples and see what they're right you know whether it's a horsepower or their weight of the grader or whatever 
Yeah. Well, weight's weight's the big issue in a grader. I mean, yep. If your front wheels, uh, if you can keep them on the ground, you're you're going to be able to uh, cut deeper. And uh, you know, if you've got a ten thousand pound machine, it's not going to cut as good as a forty thousand pound machine. I don't think they make yep. a ten thousand. I mean, one of one of the things that concerns me hearing all this talk about whether or not Caterpillar is going to even give you a bid or they're just not being responsive is say we buy a piece of equipment from, from those guys and we have warranty issues. I mean, is it going to be a, a hassle dealing with these guys trying to get this equipment repaired? So, you know, okay. I Randy, just that's that kind of stuff the flooring sheet is, is a good idea, I guess. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yep. From what I know, uh, Milton has a good reputation that way. This, this salesman, uh, seems to be an issue. Apparently John Deere fired him previously in his previous employment. It's not too hard to figure out why <laughs> difficult quotes. So who knows, but, yeah. but from what I know and, and, and Vic speak up or, or Paul uh, or Gary, uh, as far as I know, those guys have a good reputation for service. Yeah. yeah. yeah Mil Go ahead. Yeah. Paul. No, I, 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 couldn't and couldn't agree more that the Milton cat you're going to be hard pressed to be sale uh, parts and service uh, sales. I, I 100% agree with with what Peter's already said. So we've got some more work to do, guys. I just wanted to give you a, give you an update and let you know what was going on. And if you see a great big shiny machine machine driving around, we haven't bought it yet. <laughs> Yeah, the John Deere is sitting over there at the, at the town garage now. Oh, is that the good news, Vic? Because <laughs> you told us the bad news. Is that the good news? Uh, yes. <laughs> I told you about the repairs. Everything was good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Vic. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Peter. Yes, thank you, everyone. Okay, considering renewal of Red Hen liquor license, action likely. Is Move there a motion? Second. Move who's moving and who's seconding? Mary moves it. Okay, oh, and who's second. seconding? Bill, thank you. All in favor of renewing the Red Hen liquor license, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> The light's getting dark here. I can't even see. Um, approval of March 2nd select board minutes. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second? Second. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor of approving the March 2nd select board minutes, please say aye. 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 Uh, correspondence, uh, Sarah, we had a, uh, and Vic, you should pay attention to this and I'll make sure Shane gets it also, but we had a, uh, uh, John Udis contacted me. He's helping out with the, uh, with the green up day arrangements this year. And I asked him just to sh send us a short, uh, a short memo to tell us what they were hoping for and expecting on green up day, which is exactly, I believe what we've done in the past. Um, we have a truck there to, uh, to collect on a ladder, I guess, to collect to collect trash. Uh, people leave tires there and we uh, dispose of those tires and either do or do not get reimbursed for them. I believe we can get reimbursed for them. And then Bulldogs, uh, Bulldogs brings up a, a dumpster for metal and puts it by the old, uh, the old garage as well. So I think that's pretty much what we've done in the past. I expect that's what we would do this year unless anybody has any thoughts or objections to that. So I'm just going to pass that along to Shane and make sure he's he's aware of that and comfortable with it. And uh, Victor, did you get did you did uh, Sarah send you a copy of that also? Wave your hand if you've got it, Victor. He's on mute. No, I know he's on mute. So, yeah, um, yeah, I'll pass that by uh, and make sure sure Shane is aware of it in the morning. Okay. And just, just tell them if there are any issues to get back in touch with me. John was, 
John was willing to come to the meeting tonight, but I said I really didn't think that was necessary since all he was asking for and planning on was exactly what we've done in the past. Yeah. Dorinda's good. Yes, Dorinda. Somebody has to be responsible for, and we need to make sure we know who that's going to be for turning in the slips so we can get reimbursed. Um, last year, they didn't get turned in to um, Sarah, so she wasn't able to get the reimbursement. So I don't know if it's the person running the green up or if it's um, Sarah who really is responsible for doing this, but we lost out on the $500 last year. Okay, and that's that's just for the tires, right? I believe so. Sarah, is that just tires they cover? It's five hundred dollars for everything, but pretty much right. it covers the tires. We still pick up. We it's we don't. It doesn't fully reimburse the tires. Right. Last year the expenses were over eight. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, what I would, what I would suggest it. is if it's a if it's our road crew taking the tires over there that they get the slip and they turn it into Sarah. That would be. My That's idea. usually the way it works, and then it's also on the uh, receipt for um uh from casella so somehow i missed it this year i don't know why i mean everything was kind of that was just the beginning of COVID, and everything was a little disorganized so vic if you would just make shane aware that he needs to turn those into sarah yeah okay thank you anything else on uh, green up day any other uh, correspondence sarah nope um, so the only other thing I have, I have two things, um, our zoning administrator asked me, um, if we were going to, we had previously told him that we would appoint a deputy or assistant or whatever the right word is, a zoning administrator in case he was available. And we have not done that. Did you talk to, uh, Cindy? No, Sarah. No, but I have a question. If the if the planning commission uh, nominates a zoning administrator, it seems to me as though they should probably nominate an assistant zoning administrator. Yep, I agree. Yep, you're probably right. Yep. So we should reach out. We should reach out to them. Sure. And uh, Sarah had had mentioned to me that maybe it should be her, uh, for reasons that she handles a lot of the stuff already. I don't know if she still wants to do that, but if if not, we had thought that maybe Dave could uh, fill in that role also. But we can pass Absolutely. that along. I think Dave's got enough on his plate right now. So. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm yeah. just I'm just, I'm just saying it makes sense to me to have somebody. So let's make sure we we follow that. And okay. then my favorite last thing for all of you is to get your town email set up. Yeah. That's Mine is set up. I, I do have something, Peter, before we go. Oh, okay. Um, I, we've got a lot of things. Uh, we, we got the fire department thing we're going to be talking about. We've got our goals that we talked about, and I don't even know what's on our goals anymore. Um, there's, there's Welch Park. We've got a lot of things to discuss, and I think that the select board needs to meet more than every other week for a while. And maybe it's just a short meeting to take care of one item and get it off our list. But that's that's my opinion. I think we've got so many things we can't take care of it even in a two or three hour night. Well, and I also think there's there's real value in dedicating a meeting, for instance, dedicating a meeting solely to the fire department. Right. That's a big issue. Yeah. Yep. So no, I I I agree. So I, I think as it, it goes along here, we should we should just set up some of those meetings and probably between now and the summer for most people is a relatively good time to have extra meetings. Whereas once we- I'm thinking of the Wells Park one because there's a bunch of bills that we had to pay this month for Wells yeah. Park. Well, we're not, I don't wanna get into, I've been, I've been doing some work on the Welsh Park and Dorinda and I've been, been talking about it, but yes, we need to get, we need to get back to it definitely. So with that, and you've got your order signed, Dorinda, you're good? Yep, I'm Warrants good. approved, okay. Yeah. I would like to thank Dorinda for our checks that we got in the mail. <laughs> oh, our yes, our big paycheck. Our year-long oh. salary. I was very excited to see those. I felt like we had already gotten it. Like, I was no. like, is it already time again? 
Here we go. Time again. A year goes by fast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, th thank you, everybody. We've got a few people we need to work on for appointments. And uh, I purposefully thought tonight was not the night to uh, to deal with our to deal with our goals for this year. But I think we know some of the items that need to be on that list. And I would suggest we discuss them at our next uh, our next meeting. So to Steve's point, are you when is the next meeting? Are you going to wait until the first week of April, or we could actually meet next Tuesday and do oh, just? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think having the first extra meeting in April would be good. We've had a we've had a lot a lot this month already. Our town clerk might roll curl up in a ball in the corner if we. Why do you say that? <laughs> He's one of them that needs to be a whole meeting devoted to because Sarah needs to have somebody in that office where she can take time off. I, I mean, it, it, there is, she's got double the vacation hours that she should have and she needs to take time off and she's pigeonholing herself by having Dave take time away from the office to become the lister. So I think you've got another can of worms there. Sorry, Sarah, <laughs> but I mean, she deserves time off. And every time we schedule another meeting, she feels like she has to be the one there handling it. And um, I, it's just, I don't see it working for her. I agree. Well, she's gonna need to go on a book tour pretty quick. So. Yeah, and maybe, maybe the polling. Maybe get her out of town for a while. She's going to Poland. She's saving her time off to go to Poland. Yeah, I'm aware of that also. So <laughs> anyway, but I could I couldn't agree I couldn't agree more. No, I uh, mean it's so, all falling. I mean, just it all falling on her. So you know, I think something needs to be done there. Right. So the question is, is Dave only willing to work 20 hours a week? Is that his maximum, or is that our maximum? You don't want him to fall into full-time situation. Otherwise, you then have a full-time employee with all the big benefits, retirement, the whole, you're talking a whole different pay structure. Right. So if he works extra hours at certain, if he goes over 20 hours once, he automatically is a full-time employee or no? It's not no. 20. It's 30. I think it's 32 or something like that, but it's That's not right. more than once. It's so many hours per year or after so many weeks. So, so all I'm, Sarah, did you have something you wanted to say? I just want to say that Dave has no interest in doing full-time work and uh, yeah, 32 is the magic hour. So and this is, I mean, spring is going to be Lister season. So I, I'm planning on taking off some time in June if I can. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah. You can. <laughs> We're going to get out of the office. This is not your life. It is, but. All I'm trying to suggest, guys, is to, to have Dave potentially cover more hours when Sarah is away to me might be possible as long as we don't go over the maximum hours. And I, I understand he has to be, he has to be willing to do it, but um, it's great that he's going to be a lister. I think that's exciting, but I agree with the Dorinda. It's, it's a, it's a setback potentially on the other side, depending well, on how the hours work out. I mean, just, yes, sir. I mean, a lot of select board, I mean, a lot of town clerks actually just close their offices for a few days a week. I mean, it doesn't have to, one week in the summer where the office is open only three days as opposed to four days is is not going to it's not going to rock the boat too much although i don't know with the way real estate is happening today i i i that might not be the case that's one of the reasons why i'm swamped i mean we're having real estate sales in this town are out of this world they're just crazy i had to order more uh plat maps today because we've got so many subdivisions, so many new maps, a house on Notch Road that was valued at 280,000 sold for 380,000. I mean, it's it's out of control out there. So, I mean, it's it's a very different it's a very difficult time for our town right now. All right. Well, somehow some way you need to and deserve to have time off. And at the same time, we need to have the office covered. So, 
if, if Dave can't do it, if there are other people who can do it, I don't know what the answer is, but I couldn't agree with you more, Dorinda. We need to deal with that. So that's a good uh, good thing to put on our put on our plate. We don't want our town clerk and select board assistant to burn out, blow a fuse, blow a circuit breaker. <laughs> Wouldn't be good. But I'm I'm suggesting I'm suggesting that we discuss when we discuss our goals at the next at the next meeting that we say, okay, we need a meeting for this, we need a meeting, at least one meeting for that, we need another meeting for this, and we start having those meetings. But I don't think we're ready to have uh, have a meeting next week. I'm not ready. Me neither. Okay. Anything else, anybody? Are we all set? We're good. Okay. good. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you. Plenty Bye. of, plenty of, plenty of uh, work to be done. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye, Paul. Bye, Randy. Et cetera.